Hi everybody, welcome. Uh, Rob here from the Wizard of Light. Love of photography. We're going to talk about shutter speeds. A couple rules of thumb I want to talk about and I want to explain, in my opinion, when the best settings are most applicable. Out and about taking pictures, I'm on holidays, and I'm hand holding my camera. If my shutter speed is too slow, my image is going to be blurred. So you have to be aware of that. Now let me give you the rule of thumb that applies to most lenses most of the time. And again, it's a rule of thumb. Some people can break this rule. So if you have a 50 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter setting on your lens and you're hand holding, the rule of thumb is the next number up from that focal length is the slowest shutter speed you ought to be using. So I believe for most cameras, it's a 60th of a second. So if you have a standard lens or you're at 50 mil, on your zoom lens, set your camera to at least a 60th of a second. When I'm shooting, especially when I'm shooting a wedding or even if I'm out on travel or whatever, if I'm, if I'm without a tripod, like tripod's a great tool and you can pretty much do a lot as soon as you have a tripod. I love using tripods, but oftentimes uh, I can't use a tripod and I prefer not to especially when I'm going for a walk or traveling or what have you and I'm just photographing for fun or if I'm photographing a couple in an engagement session. Uh, oftentimes I prefer not to use a tripod. I find it cumbersome. However, if I'm shooting a family and it's a big playing client and they're going to buy 30-40 inch canvas prints, it's very important that I get my ISO down. It's very important that I get the best aperture so the shutter speed in those cases might float around a 30th or a 40th or a 50th of a second because a lot of my family stuff I'm photographing late in the day when the sun like I don't like going out in raw sunlight this is really bad more on that later I want you to understand shutter speed and how I apply shutter speed in my day-to-day -day operations in my photography studio so if I'm shooting a professional paid gig I'll bring my tripod. That's usually when you'll see me bring my tripod. And that way I can use a slower shutter speed and I can uh, focus on getting the best aperture and the best ISO. I want to get the best results. So, but if that's not available, if that's not happening and I'm shooting for other reasons and I need to get a slower shutter speed, there's a lot of stuff that I can do that I will do to cheat. Uh, sometimes I'll be at a wedding and I'll use the groom's shoulder and I'll say, sorry, I'm just going to use your shoulder. You are my tripod. So hold still. Or I'll use a wall or a telephone pole. Uh, it's very important that you put your elbows in your ribs and you hold your camera like this here. So you've got the meaty part of your thumbs and your hands right in there and then you squeeze the camera. So this holds the lens and the side of your camera and this holds your shutter and the rest of your camera so it's nice and stable. You never want to do this. I see people do this or this. This is very unstable. This gives you a lot of stability and you're able to uh, sometimes push the shutter speed down to a slower speed below what is practical. Remember my rule of thumb? 50th of a second, go to the next one up. So if you're shooting at a, say you have a 200 mil lens, the slowest shutter speed you should be at is 250. I've shot at 100 and lower using these strategies. Some of those professional lenses will have a built-in stabilizer. I don't like relying on those. So I like to really use the strategies that I'm talking about for maximum stability to guarantee result. The ultimate, of course, is to always use a tripod. That's the ultimate. And there are some photographers, and I used to be like this at one time. It was a hard rule. It was my best friend, always had a tripod with me, always. And I've kind of broken away from that, given the circumstances, given I'm able to make compromises and get the best results without a tripod. Again, as I mentioned, when I'm shooting a professional paid gig, I know I have to get the results. The tripod is essential. I just slow everything down and I anchor everything down, I'm doing the rest of the stuff. I use these strategies. Sometimes I will squat right down, I'll get my butt almost to the sidewalk, and I have my, what do you call these? Elbows. I put my elbows into my knees and I become a human tripod if I need to shoot from a lower angle and if I need absolute stability. 
I'm pretty flexible because of yoga and kickboxing and all that stuff, so I'm able to do that. If you can't do that, you're going to struggle a little bit more. Sometimes you use a, a fence or a, a hood of a car in order to stabilize everything. But here's, here's a shot by some, uh, some rapids. And you can see the different settings here where as I go through each image, you can see the water slowly as I increase my shutter speed. You can see the water slowly becoming less blurred and more sharp. There's a point here uh, where the water is going to be frozen. That happens to be the shutter speed for that scene that will determine when that water needs to be non-blurred. Now, maybe you don't want a sharp scene water. Maybe you want the water blurred. What well, You get to choose. Either way, you make the choice based on what it is you're trying to achieve, based on the light available, based on the speed of the subject. So in this particular case, the water was moving at a certain speed. So there's no hard, fast rule, right? You have to determine what it is you're trying to achieve based on the scene available to you. Know what I mean? So it's the same when we're talking about uh, my daughter's basketball games, for example. Now in these particular scenes, you have, these girls are running pretty fast. So I had to get the ISO all the way up, and I'm gonna talk about ISO in another video soon. But you can see where the most important thing in those circumstances is you got a lot of motion, is to get a fast shutter speed. And these were all handheld, so I had to make sure my focus was bang on. I had to make sure maximum light was coming in the, in the lens and the camera. And that's why I had 2.8 as my setting. That was the fastest setting on this particular lens, which is a 70 to 200, shooting at mostly 200 in order to achieve the results that I needed so that I could, boom, focus in on one subject. And that's what I was trying to achieve in that particular scene. Same scene, the inside of the uh, gymnasium, wide shot. It's completely different. I don't really need to focus in as much, so I have a little more flexibility there. I could bring my shutter speed down a little bit if I want to. So it depends on the scene you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to freeze it? Are you trying to get lowest ISO setting because you need maximum quality and you need to get a specific aperture out of it, depending on the scene? All these things play together. For me, the shutter speed is not the big one because it's, it's not that important for me. For scenic photographers and sports photographers, it's more of a big deal, but it's important to understand it and how it works and learn to interpret your exposure based on your ISO, based on the speed of the scene available to you and make decisions based on that. Okay, so we're gonna cover this more and more throughout this series as I get into images. And you'll see how I show images where it'll determine certain settings. I've determined certain settings that make sense based on that particular series. All right? All right, sounds good, thanks.